featuring your good self. You were one of Andy Hunter's henchmen sorting out Nigel Harmon in the E20 nightclub. How very true. Uh, what do you remember about some of the scenes you were in? We would also like to know how many more episodes did you appear in after this storyline? Take it easy. James and John, a.k.a. Arnold and Dirk Diggler. What are you guys? Um, thank you for the email. All right, I'll explain a little bit about that. Yes, I was in EastEnders and keep a look. What are you talking about? And I think you're going to tell me too. You're making a big mistake. No, I made my mistake last time, which is why I've sorted out a bit of extra insurance. Hello. Well, don't worry about us being disturbed. It's a uh, fair old schlep to Deptford. Don't see Sharon getting back for ages. Do you know what I'm going to do, Dennis? Well, I'll find the person who did for Jack. I have a pretty good idea. I'm going to shake his hand. This is a wind-up, right? All this aggro and all you really want to do is pat me on the back. Well, it's like I was explaining to a mutual friend of ours last week. I've got some sort of gangland vendetta on my hands and I really need to know. They've spotted me wrestling with uh, Nigel Harmon. Old Nigel, I tell you what, he's a strong kid, is Nigel. Although, having said that, in my own defence, I'm totally unfit and completely unhealthy. Uh, so, it's, you know, he could have thrown me around like a rag doll if he wanted to. But, uh, yes, I was wrestling with Nigel Harmon, who's, who's never kept in touch. I've never had a letter off him or a phone call to say, how are you doing, Chris, or now that he's doing the movies, come on, Chris, I've got a part for you. Nothing, nothing. Come on, Nigel. <laughs> Just make sure I've got last week's money and this week's money by Friday. Oh, thanks. See, wasn't that hard, was it? Staff only in here, punters through there. You know where the Vic is, don't you? Say, so I uh, the character that I was in there, I was supposed to be a bit of a hitman. Um, but uh, I never got any dialogue in there. They never gave me. I was too expensive, to be honest. They couldn't afford to give me the dialogue. Uh, seriously, I was on a lot of money when I was doing that. A lot of money. The ret no money for me, I take it. Uh, no. Do you think so? I really didn't want it to come to this. But you understand, I can't let you get away with not paying. Bad for business, you see. Yeah, I'll have to make up some story about how I walked into a door or something like that. No, it doesn't work that way. You see this? On the right hands, it can have a devastating effect, like being hit by a wrecking ball. Now, you ain't gonna look like you walked into a door, I'm afraid. Use our heads, eh? Yeah, I think we got the point across. I'll give you a bell if we need some more. Huh? Yeah? Ah, oh, just wondered if you fancied a bit of lunch over at the cafe. Uh, yeah, sure. Listen, you take care, yeah? Yes, sir, it was good fun. I really loved working on EastEnders. Uh, the trick is, and I was used quite regularly uh, on there over a long period of time, but my, my, uh, my own personal discipline is arrive early, very early, uh, present yourself to uh, whoever it is, the authority figure up there, that would be an AD, and say, I'm here. Where they tell you to wait, wait. 
don't complain. And then when they, you're brought on set, be within uh, eye distance of an AD so that if they turn around and they say you're needed now, that they can find you immediately. If they've got to look for you everywhere, if you're causing trouble, if you're moaning and groaning, you're going to be, well, you, you won't be sacked because you're kind of, you're only there for the day, but they just won't rehire you, see? And there were plenty there that didn't get rehired. You just got to be respectful and, not, and, not, and none of this business with, oh, it's you, I'm such a big fan. Listen, I'm in the business. I'm not a fan of anybody but me. Mashed potatoes, man. I love it. I'll have that daily, forever, on to the ending of the world and beyond. Uh, mashed potatoes, love it. Who got to who? And so we continue on with the game. We're shedding gone. I can't believe it. Got emails. <sighs> Loved it, and they killed. Well, they didn't kill me off. Actually, they've actually left it open. I could theoretically come back in my own my character that I was, which was Andy Hunter's uh, henchman, and I don't necessarily have to come back as a gangster either. So, uh, but you, you see, the way that you audition for EastEnders, you have to go for a now. What's it called? I I always forget what this is called. You go along. Uh, it's like a little drama group, and they run kind of scenarios, and they just write you're angry with her or something, and then you just go through it. It's a uh, somebody remind me. I've forgotten. Is it any wonder? I know. One nice year is to leave all calls when I'm finished. Only recently, what was it, Friday the 13th? Yes, and I should know, because I should have been working. And I, I misread my rotor. Disaster! And poor Rob, he had to do the whole shift on his own. Never mind. Listen, I suffered. I was sat in a bar having a drink. I suffered. <laughs>